So my amazing wife came up with the idea for this video. She's going to ask me a few questions and I'm just going to sit here and answer them. So let's get into it. Okay, so we might hear a little eight month old baby in the background, but let's, let's begin with our first question. So what first got you into gardening? What is your background story with beginning gardening? Maybe this is just my opinion, I don't know, but I guess I kind of feel like every human is like evolutionarily um, instilled with an interest in gardening. Almost every single person I've ever met thinks gardening is interesting. It's just, I think it only takes killing a few plants to give up for most people, but I'm a, I'm a stubborn Taurus and I just don't give up. So there have been many, many times in my life where I've started and killed a whole bunch of plants and then just said, okay, where, where do I learn and how do I move on from that? And it didn't even start with growing plants um, with the intention of, of growing like vegetation. I actually started uh, growing plants in aquariums. Back in 2014, when I was a bachelor in Boulder, Colorado, I kind of obsessively dove into the hobby of uh, freshwater aquarium building. And I wanted all real plants in my tanks. And so I ended up with like three tanks in my living room. And this is like a 600 square foot, one bedroom apartment. So I had like three or four, I don't even remember, aquariums in the main living area that were growing plants and had fish and they were all part of my big hobby. And I, I wanted to take it to the next level. So I did a 50 gallon aquarium in my bedroom with a 30 gallon aquarium turned upside down on top of it to allow room for these plants to grow. Cause I wanted to build like this whole habitat that was all kind of self-sustaining. And I realized very quickly that you have to be in control of a self-sustaining habitat. They don't just self-sustain. You have to know a lot. You have to know a lot about pH and you have to know a lot about overgrowth and algae. And you have to, I mean, I didn't, I learned very quickly about algae growth and sunlight because of the, that experience. And then that's something that I use today when I'm building a garden is thinking about if I'm going to create algae in, in the tank because of the sunlight. Um, but anyway, so after I built that tank in my bedroom, I had a, you know, a chameleon in there. I had fish. It was all really, really cool. I really liked it. Um, I wanted to take it to the next level from there. So I built an aquaponic garden in my apartment. Okay, here's my aquaponic grow setup. <clears throat> the bottom is a 10 gallon aquarium. It was a really, really fun thing to get into. And that was my, really my first experience with growing plants was actually hydroponic. After 2014, after I built that aeroponic garden, my, my wife and I moved to Hawaii where I kept gardening and then we moved to California, the central coast in California, and I wanted to do a garden there. I was adamant that I needed just to keep gardening. It was like getting me through it. Gardening has been so, it's been such a nice, just beautiful soul filling experience for me. I just love gardening. I just love watching plants grow and being a part of it. So I knew I needed to have that in California. And after the first month of gardening there, we got our water bill and it was like $260 or something ridiculous. And our landlord even called and was like, hey, I don't know what's going on. And we told him we have a garden. We were just irrigating our two rows of crops. And then I had some flowers and some pots. And it wasn't even that much, but I knew I wanted to keep gardening. So it was then that I realized that I need to take on a different method of gardening that's gonna save me water and space because it was a very small space that we were living in in California as well. Um, so in California, I started doing the hydroponic farming. Um, it was a really cool system and we got to watch plants grow in our kitchen. And then we moved into the RV for six months that I'm currently converting. And at that time I planned on taking the closet and turning it into a little garden on the road. And I wanted to do an aeroponic garden on the road that just had like tomatoes and green beans and stuff in it. And lo and behold, we decided just to rent, park up the RV and, and make it this massive garden. And I couldn't be more thrilled for this experience. So it wasn't that long ago that you learned about fog ponics. I personally think fog ponics is super, super cool. And I'm just curious how you got into fog ponics and what was the trajectory that led you to going from hydroponics to aeroponics to fog ponics? <sighs> fog ponics are super cool. That's what it is. It's like, you see, yeah, I, I, it was, 
there there are a lot of reasons that I want fog ponics to be a thing. a thing and successful because it's cheaper than any of the other hydroponic grow methods. Uh, all you have to do is buy the at the little atomizer and it's cool. And I've actually, you know, I've seen some of these beautiful root systems start to develop and I thought it would be really expensive to do a whole fog ponic setup. But lo and behold, you could just buy these little things off for like 20 bucks off, e off uh, Amazon and build the fog ponic garden. You don't even have to put the fan in there. Um, so I built out a bunch and I built out a bunch of different designs to try different fog ponic methods of growing because I really wanted it to work. I think it's really cool and I'd love to design a very simple fog ponic garden that works, that's easy to make, that's easy to maintain and you know come up with the, the blueprints and, and, and give that to you guys so that more people can try fog ponic successfully. It just seems like I think I'm kind of like right on the verge of cracking the code of exactly what I need to, to get my plants to grow properly in fog ponics. So I'm excited about it, but it's it's been a real, uh, it's kind of like having a, a puppy, fog ponics is. You know, you, you, you go into the house and you see it and you're like, oh, that's awesome. That's so cute. It's so great. And then you put your shoes on and you find out, you know, oh, I pissed in my shoes again. That's fog ponics for me. <laughs> like... It's, it's been such a love-hate thing. And right now, you know, it's, it's just a teacher. Fog Ponics is a great teacher. Anyway. All right, so our last question. We are curious, Luca and I, what is next for this channel for Humble Growth? What do you see coming videos in the next couple of coming weeks? And what is the long-term vision for this channel? Well, um... Since fog ponics have been really tough, that's what a lot of these videos have been about lately, but it's led me to want to do a um, HPA, or a high pressure aeroponics build. So I think that's one thing I really want to do. I also want to do a low pressure aeroponics build. So I want to do the cannabis closet. I'd love for that to be a HPA build. And the bush garden where the fridge is, I would love for that to be an LPA build. And then I'm building something that I'm pretty excited about. I'm calling it the Hydro Wall. And you guys will just have to stay tuned for that one. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, it was fun for me to answer those questions. And I look forward to seeing you guys on Friday. Oh, baby. Baby, baby, baby. There's a baby. <laughs> He's real. He's real.